Hello friends, my name is Luke the Gamer Duke. I enjoy playing, dissecting, and talking about video games. Today I'm doing a bit more talking rather than dissecting or playing, but I'll have plenty of opinions, hot takes to hopefully keep you entertained throughout. Xbox just released their game showcase for 2024, which included tons of trailers, teasers, and snippets of gameplay, and a wide range of them at that. I've always been a huge fan of Xbox, starting way back with Halo CE and working with whatever the hell this monstrosity was supposed to be. Overall, the showcase has brought in a lot of positive feedback. Personally, I've never been a fan of these style of trailers and showcases due to the lack of context and limited gameplay, if any at all. Not to mention, Xbox exclusives have been all but non-existent over the past couple years. But I wanted to check it out and see if there's a reason to be excited for Xbox games again. Of course, all the trailers are going to say in-game footage and cinematic at the bottom, to which we've all heard that before, but I'll choose to take them at their word on it. I'll briefly go through everything in order of the showcase, provide some thoughts along the way, and when the dust is settled, I'll list out what I think the best successes and the worst bombs will be. What are my thoughts on them? Well, let's go find out. And let's dive right into it with the new Call of Duty Black Ops 6. Six? They're on six now? Jeez. I've been out of the Call of Duty bandwagon for a while now. Everything looks quite nice. Uh, yeah, that's, that's about it. It's just another Call of Duty to me. And from what I understand from the community at large, they have not been very happy with Call of Duty in recent years. I'm sure it'll introduce some fun gadgets and some new weapons and the graphics look great, but it's one of those things you're either all in on or you've reached the point in life where your prefrontal cortex has finally formed. It'll still sell like free cocaine though. Yes. 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 Doom. Let's not even play. This shit looks sick. And that soundtrack. I need the headbang. Turn that shit up. I mean, this looks, this looks so good. How id Software continues to make the most simplistic act of murdering demons ever more entertaining, innovative, and challenging with each new installment is beyond my understanding. That's a buzzsaw shield and a flail, a demon murdering medieval flail. And, what, no, uh, is that a titan mech suit and a dragon? Doom kicked our teeth in back in 1993. They returned to curb stomp our faces in 2016 and 2020. And I can't wait to see how they massacre our poor souls this time around. Fuck yeah. Here we have a new state of decay. I've never been a zombie shooter survivor kind of gamer, particularly the survival ones. The couple of actual gameplay snippets do look stellar though. According to Metacritic, State of Decay 2 did not score well among critics or players, stating it tried to do too much outside of being what the core was, a community survival game. If they return to the roots of the original, this might be good. Otherwise, it might just be another bland-ass zombie shooter. We'll see. Up next, we have a new Dragon Age, Veilguard. I played around with Inquisition a bit, which looked great, but the gameplay and dialogue isn't really my cup of tea. Dialogue was a bit too Dungeons and Dragons-y and a bit too campy for me. And something about this trailer comes across even more campy than I remember Inquisition being. And it just looks, judging from the title, it might lean into a stylized theme? The visuals kind of gave me Fortnite vibes a few times. It's been a decade since Inquisition was released, which actually didn't score too well among players. And I don't exactly see people jumping at the seams for this release, but it probably has an audience out there somewhere, so it might sell fine. But where are we gonna find it? Okay, what do we have here? Oh, it looks pretty nice. And wait, I know that spacesuit is, is this a Starfield expansion? Oh boy. What did they expand? The area boundaries? Does anyone actually still play this? Did anyone actually ever play this? Uh, probably not. Skip. And straight away we know this is Fallout. And here's a hit or miss franchise if I've ever seen one. 
I've never played them. I know, I know. Am I even an Xbox gamer? Yes, yes I am. I just prefer the Elder Scrolls theme more. So, this is just an expansion for Fallout 76? Which was the worst scored Fallout? Uh, yes. Yes it is. So I guess they're banking this off of the success of the series then? I don't know. If you ever feel like you need a side of shit with your shit entree, purchasing an expansion for a shit game is a great way to get those rocks off. Have fun with this one. Best of luck out there. So here we have our first world premiere. Expedition 33. And straight away, this looks phenomenal and incredibly creative. I'm getting Final Fantasy X gameplay style vibes here, in that you travel around, battle enemies in a turn-based format, level characters and gear, which is all good. One thing I might be noticing is the combat camera maybe seems a little wonky and over-engaging or over-exaggerated. And I know you have to have hit numbers on there, but and I don't know, is the plain white too distracting maybe? But granted the story, characters, and dialogue are well written, this might do well. It definitely looks cool. I simply do not understand games like this. For South of Midnight, it just seems like it's mixing too many different and niche elements together. I'm having trouble deciding who the target audience even is. The art direction and stylization looks great everywhere. But that's kind of all I can make out from this. A female protagonist from the southern bayou with a hard accent looking for her ma with stale looking combat might be a difficult land. And I'm always skeptical of random OP abilities like flight. That stop motion animation style in the cinematics can look quite jarring. Probably even more so when comparing to the smooth gameplay. I'm kind of getting Forspoken vibes here, but we'll see. The cinematics for WoW have always left my jaw slobbering all over the floor with how great they are. There is absolutely no denying that. I just can't be bothered with anything retail WoW. And maybe I have no idea what I'm talking about because I've been out of the loop for so long, but it seems like the last thing retail WoW needs is more content. If I had friends, I'd probably get in the classic, but otherwise, I could really care less about a new WoW expansion. And hey look! The Epic Edition is only $90, and you get so much value, like 5,000% value. Yeah, have fun. And straight away we know who this is. I dabbled with Metal Gear Solid's way back on PS2 and had a pretty fun time with them. For the most part, they've done good by the fan base for a long time, and it's been 10 years since Phantom Pain. God, 10 years? What the hell? Everything looks absolutely stellar. The combat and animation seem incredibly dynamic and very engaging. I've never been a diehard for Snake, but I might actually check this out. I think this will do quite well. Commencing virtuous mission now. So this was an absolute joke when it first launched, but has Sea of Thieves turned the ship around? I have no idea. Some reviews say yar, other reviews say nar. But with what we've seen from No Man's Sky, it is possible to write the ship. If they manage to present what an open world sea exploration game on a pirate ship could and should be, it might be worth checking out. So here we have a new Souls-like, or since she has a firearm, I suppose it's a remnant-like, Flintlock. And straight away, the art direction and animations are very solid. The gameplay actually looks great too. I was quite surprised. The female protagonist even sounds like a worthy badass as well, which we all know doesn't happen too often. Come on then, fight me and die. I'm wondering about some of the potentially obscure skills a bit, and I'm obviously unsure in the way of story, but the initial gameplay impressions look absolutely awesome. This actually might do okay. I've never played the Age of Mythologies, but I've been a huge Age of Empires fan since I can remember. And Mythology's been around since 2002? I did not know it went back that far. But they have mostly great reviews over the years. 
And if you enjoy an ancient era RTS that has stood the test of time, I don't see why Age of Mythology wouldn't be right up your alley. Hell, I might finally give it a try. Nice. I was wrong. Perfect Dark goes back decades. And God knows we haven't had a great Perfect Dark in basically just as long. I think this is a great concept for a reboot. I really like the Mirror's Edge parkour style of environment navigation. And also has some hints of Deus Ex style gameplay, in that it offers stealth and espionage as an option. And when that most certainly fails, you go in guns blazing. The fidelity looks great too. The gameplay looks great. I am quite intrigued. I do kind of get some Fable Face vibes though. I guess she has to look a bit on the built side given her job title in a realism themed game. I just hope her jawline and chin don't turn out bigger than mine. But damn, this looks good. So here we have another Blizzard trailer for Diablo 4. Which of course looks as glorious as any 3D rendering possibly could. AI's got nothing on these. There is no way around that. And damn, that got rough. I mean, damn, oh my God, ouch. I would have given away that stone so quick. Also, I know I'm missing some story context here because I haven't played D4, but how is Mephisto's soul stone still intact? I remember smashing it at Hellforge like 25 years ago. I hear D4 is finally good now, after five years, 42 seasons, and 107 last chances. Personally, I'm of the opinion D4, by default, can never be good, for several reasons I'd like to eventually elaborate on in another video. I really don't think throwing member Barry Mephisto in the mix is going to help, especially for an additional how much? Oh my god. If you're the person who's paying $90 for a Diablo 4 expansion, I have one message for you. But I think this expansion is absolutely make or break for the D4 crowd to not consider D4 equal dead. Unless, that is, we're resetting the last chance counter. Well, we've all seen and heard about the new Fable. And we've all seen and heard what everyone's primary complaint is. I played Fable 1 and dabbled in Fable 3. They were fun, engaging, and entertaining. This new one looks very good fidelity-wise. It looks very good. But I'm sorry, I simply don't want to play an RPG as an ogre lady. Judging from the trailers, it seems like the primary story circles around Miss Shrek, so I'm doubtful character creation will be implemented. However, if character creation is implemented, I think this will have a massive effect on how this game does. Otherwise, it'll probably sell within the certain crowds, but I don't know. Unfortunately, I think Troll Lady will turn away more Fable fans, then bring new ones in. Also, it just seems like it's going to lean too much into the modern themes of who the characters are. But hey, we'll see when it drops. So here we have a new team shooter, Fragpunk. And this looks cool as shit. Super colorful and vibrant with engaging effects and the main hook being game or character altering techniques used throughout the match. This looks like a well needed fresh take on the hero shooter. I mean something has to break the monotony of Overwatch, right? Could this be it? Maybe. It's my turn. In the city. And here we have another indie title, Winter Burrow, which seems to be a 2D survival RPG game where you're playing as uh, a mouse. The artwork looks quite nice. I imagine the storytelling could be deep and meaningful here, which is likely the primary draw, along with some exploration and crafting. We've seen plenty of things go boom so far, but story-driven exploration games have an audience too. I'm just not in it. But I'm sure this will do well with some of the more Xbox and chill gamers out there. Oh. Oh, that's a cool sound. Oh, I like that beat. Mixtape sounds. Oh, what? Oh, 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 those visuals. Oh, God. Oh, my God. That looks horrible. Oh, a lot of this. Oh, this looks so cheap. What? 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 What the? What? What is this? This is terrible. Oh, the stylization of the art does not come across as very appealing here. And the animation is just terrible. It's that force limited frame rate, which is just way too jarring. 
Ah, uh, like it looks terrible. Like, and, and what is this? What is this game even about? What? What do you? What do you do? What the hell is going on? All right, I'm, 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 I'm too confused. Um, pass. Bye. Go away. Well, here's a new flight simulator. The game plays exactly as the name suggests. You simulate flying aircraft. I know these kinds of games have been around for a long time at this point, and it definitely has an audience, otherwise they wouldn't be on number 107 or whatever number installment this is. Everything looks great, which I suppose it has to, being it's a simulator. I enjoyed my fair share of Roller Coaster Tycoon and Planet Coaster, but unless it's a tank, vehicle sims are not exactly my thing. I do imagine there's plenty of fly people waiting for the new installment, though. Have fun with it! Elder Scrolls Online. I tried playing this. I tried to get into it. I tried, man. I just... I just can't. It's just not the same as a full Elder Scrolls game. But I know many, many others have dived deep, deep into the online world of Elder Scrolls and are still enjoying it today. So, cheers to you ESO players for some more content. I hope it's good. I don't know who I can trust. Everything I've seen and heard about the original Life is Strange received great reviews. Seems like a creepy yet entertaining type of murder mystery, I think? I'm just not really a cinematic kind of murder mystery type of person. But if it's running in the same vein as the original, I have absolutely no doubt fans will return for this one. So I'm sure it'll sell just fine. It's the same as this one. Secret in history. This actually completely took me by surprise. First off, it's actually Indiana Jones taking the lead and doing Indiana Jones things. I'm already a fan. I think the last time I remember seeing an Indiana Jones game was on the Nintendo 64 or something. The graphics look great. The animation looks good, but something looks a little off with the frame rate. However, the voice acting and scoring sound like they're taken right from the movie. If not, maybe a little heavy handed with some of the corniness. Again, everything looks absolutely fantastic with the texture work, but I'm a little unsure how engaging the gameplay will actually be. It seems quite on the cinematic side. My fear is, outside of die-hard indie fans, who exactly is the target audience? The unfortunate reality is I think the game won't know what it wants to be, nor who it wants to be for. I want this to do well. I could be wrong, but I'm just not sure the audience is there for it. We'll see. So here we have a new mech game, Mecha Break. And this is one of those games that is all about the gameplay. Everything has to be on point. It has to be snappy, animate well, and at the correct speeds and weights as to not noticeably defy physics. As well as having intense but navigable action sequences with good enough pacing for your brain to catch up, but also not let that adrenaline drop. It seems interesting, almost like a modern Galaga style in the gameplay. But with most arcade games, I'm curious how long that gameplay can remain engaging and entertaining. It definitely looks cool as shit, but like I said, it's all about the gameplay. So we'll see. Really subtle. So this is obviously an Eastern studio and therefore will automatically look fantastic and play like a dream with insane attention to detail and creativity. It's called Wu Chang. Obviously, it's a Souls-like, which is fine, as I'm a huge fan of the genre. Everything looks cool as shit. The gameplay and combat looks great, as do all of the enemies. Even your protagonist looks like a little badass. I am a little worried, though, with the lack of story and character development in these types of games, as a solid story would go a long way. And introducing a new way to level yourself, your abilities, or gear would be great, too. But off the cuff, gameplay and fidelity looks so badass. And here we have another adventure game, Avowed. I've not heard anything about this. I'm all for a new adventure game though. It looks super cool with engaging effects and decent combat. 
I'm getting maybe a Skyrim type vibe with how you explore the world and engage with it. So I'm assuming it's a single player game, which is great. Granted the story, characters and dialogue are engaging, this might do very well. And here we have another adventure game, Atom Fall. Resembles maybe something of a Fallout type game. The looks do have the same theme at least. Much of the environment looks very nice, but I'm getting some lack of fidelity here and there on some of the models and textures. This is another one where it's going to be all about story and gameplay. But I do think the Fallout style games are a bit saturated right now, so this might actually fall to the wayside. Well, what's there to say that hasn't already been said about this one? I haven't played an Assassin's Creed in forever, since like Black Flag, and I don't even think I finished it. I don't even think I got halfway through. So I have no idea what's going on anymore. The gameplay sure looks great, and obviously the fidelity looks great as well. But we all know there's more to an Assassin's Creed than just gameplay. And unfortunately for the gameplay, I feel like all other elements will fall short. Have fun with this one. I remember seeing these games from forever ago, but never took the dive into Stalker. And being it's in Chernobyl, I imagine it'll have the same Fallout type of gameplay. Previous entries scored well, and with the horror-esque theme and seemingly engaging combat, hopefully this can stand out among the other adventure games with a Fallout theme shown today. Today? Oh, get out of here. Everyone knows you have absolutely nothing to do with any of the awesomeness I saw here today. Okay, okay, get out of here. Let's check out this last trailer. And goddamn. God damn. Gears of War was groundbreaking for the time. It was somehow able to provide an awesomely intense campaign absurdly addicting combat mechanics and multiplayer. And along with the intense gameplay, they also managed to create and deliver on some of the most gut-wrenching, heartbreaking story elements of all time. Jack, open it up. No one was prepared for Dom to find Maria. No one. And after Gears 3, it just wasn't the same. I think I liked Gears 4 a little. I think it was 4. But nothing has come close to what the trilogy offered. I was always surprised the next installment after the trilogy wasn't an E-Day prequel. In my opinion though, this next installment has a lot to prove. Gears has slowly fallen to the wayside over the years, injecting modernity into its DNA instead of simply being what it is. And if you don't know what it is, Go play the trilogy. You'll understand. And of everything on this list, I hope Gears E-Day delivers more than all of it. Because I simply cannot stand to be disappointed by another Gears game. I just can't. Something big. Well, there it is. The Xbox Game Showcase. And I must say, I was way more surprised than I thought I'd be. There's a lot to look forward to here. Now let's rank some of these. Real quick though, I did notice there was no Halo or Forza news. However, as both are in desperate need of some soul searching, that's probably for the best at the moment. As far as the absolute top sellers, or since it's on Game Pass, I guess most players played is now the metric? Anyway. Black Ops, Doom, and Gears of War will be the best sellers, hands down. Those are the three blockbusters. Metal Gear Solid could be considered a runner-up, I suppose. And getting to the world premieres with the indie games, they were completely hit or miss. The ones I think will do well are Expedition 33 with the turn-based combat and glorious fidelity. Wu Chang, again, for the Souls-like mechanics and gorgeous fidelity and creativity. And I actually think Fragpunk could be a sleeper. I feel like people are in desperate need of a new team-based hero shooter. 
and the ones I simply think won't sell well are South of Midnight for being way too niche, Winterboro again for being maybe a bit too niche to appeal to a large enough audience, and Atomfall, as there are plenty of Fallout style games and most of them seem to look and play better. I wanted to put mixtape in there since I have no idea what the hell it's supposed to be, but I feel like that was too easy of a choice. It'll likely still fail though. And for the AAA bus, unfortunately I don't think Indiana Jones will sell well. I'm just not sure a large enough audience is there for a slow paced, cinematic inspired Indiana Jones game. Granted it's close to launch, but I think AC Shadows will score poorly simply because I don't believe Ubisoft knows how to make a coherent video game anymore, let alone the character choices. And finally, I couldn't decide which will do worse, State of Decay or Dragon Age. I think it'll be decided over who pisses off their fan base the most. Based off the trailers, likely Dragon Age. Oddly enough, I feel like Fable might actually do well enough with its overall larger audience to pull out okay. Maybe. But all the expansions will be a joke. Starfield and Fallout for sure. D4 is an absolute coin toss with its fanbase. Not the Diablo fanbase, mind you, the D4 fanbase. These are two separate entities. Now the games I'm most stoked for from a purely subjective standpoint. DOOM! Obviously. Gears E-Day, God please don't suck. Please be unabashedly brutal and manly while highlighting companionship and brothers in arms. PLEASE! And I'm actually interested in the new Metal Gear Solid. It looks very solid. And the couple indie titles I'm interested in are Wu Chang for the martial arts style incorporated into a Souls-like, along with the incredible creativity. I love fast-paced arcade shooters way back when, and granted the gameplay is great, I'll probably check out Mecha Break. And for some ridiculous entertaining fun, I'll probably get into Frag Punk as well, because it looks super cool. But hey, feel free to let me know your thoughts in the comments. Were you as surprised as I was? Or is everything aside from Doom and Gears complete shit? Because let's be real, no one can shit on Doom. No one! Adios.